Hello, everybody. Welcome to another great episode of Distilled, Brewed, and Reviewed. My name is John, and you are in the world-famous Sipping Den. And down here, I review everything that has anything to do with alcohol and anything to do with coffee. <laughs> it's wondrous, actually. <laughs> it's just, I just have so much fun doing this for you all. Um, I'll let you know that uh, I have a heck of a playlist because I have to have it <clears throat> in order to categorize and subcategorize everything I do. For example, my wine playlist alone has 40 categories, but that's a beautiful thing because you just go down there and you pop right on the one you're interested in. I always challenge people to check out my playlist because I really think you're going to be surprised. You're going to be awed. You're going to be just, you're going to have fun in there. You're going to really see what this channel's about. I think you're going to spend some time finding out all about these different categories. Um, interesting one today. Oh, one further thing real quick. Uh, every video I do, I always pin the first comment so you can see it. And the reason I do that is because it always has a link that you just press on. And it's a link to the playlist that pertains to what I'm reviewing. In this case, not just wine. Cabernet Franc. Now, this is very interesting. So first, let me tell you what Cabernet Franc is real quick, in case you're not, you're not aware of this wine. Cabernet Franc is one of the major black grape varieties worldwide. Black grape. It's pretty cool. It is principally grown for blending with Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot in the Bordeaux style, but can also be vinified alone, as in the Loire's Chinon. This is 100% uh, Cabernet Franc. In addition to being used in blends and produced as a varietal in Canada and the United States, it is sometimes made into ice wine in those regions. Cabernet Franc is lighter than Cabernet Sauvignon, making a bright pale red wine that contributes finesse and lends a peppery perfume to blends with more robust grapes. Depending on the growing region and style of wine, additional aromas can include tobacco, raspberry, bell peppers, cassis, and violets. Records of Cabernet Franc in Bordeaux go back to the end of the 18th century, although it was planted in Loire, Loire Valley of France. Long before that time, DNA analysis indicates that Cabernet Franc is one of the two parents of Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and Carmenere. Beautiful. So this baby stuff. There's more stuff on here if you want to read it. What's cool about this, check out this label and the name of it. So it's Cabernet Franc. And the name of the wine is Cabaret Franc. So check it out. It's a French wine. Check out the guy's mustache. Right? Check out that picture. It's beautiful. Like old time label here. Um, and if you read right here, and it's almost impossible to read that red on gold, but I'm going to read it to you because it's interesting. Uh, how do you get the name? In the late 19th century, Captain Francis Frobisher discovered he had a rare and unusual gift. He was able to cultivate a variety of wondrous mustaches, which took on a life of their own. He became known as Cabaret Frank and was the toast of society with ladies often fainting, getting the vapors at the sight of his incredible and varied performing mustaches. That's what it's like. All right, let's get into it. Should be a light red. Let's see. I know it said black grape, but it's usually a lighter red color. And when I mean lighter, I mean lighter than like Cabernet Sauvignon or even Merlot. And there it is. Uh, yeah, it looks about the same, actually. I don't think it's much lighter. All right. There's a screw cap. Put the screw cap back on. Surprising for a French wine, right? They're always with the... Um, it is 2018, by the way. 13.5 uh, uh, alcohol by volume. Yeah. All right. Woo! Yeah, that's a lot of berries going on in that bad boy. Oh, yeah, it smells like a wine cellar. You ever been to a uh, uh, winery and you go on the tour and you go where all the barrels, the wines are sitting in the barrels, or where they're crushing the grapes, uh, where the wine's fermenting? That's what it smells like. So it brings back pleasant memories for me. Yeah, 
berries. Just smells like a wine cellar. I like that. I don't know if I've been to many, many, many wine cellars, but my family growing or not well, more making wine. Uh the garage always smelled like this when I was a kid growing up, so. Oh yeah, beautiful. I don't know anything about aging on this or barrel aging, but I didn't see it anywhere. It smells like it's spent some time in wood. All right, let's get into the taste. We'll do a little acclimation sip, and then we'll really dig into it. Mm. And while I'm doing this, I'll tell you, at the time of this video, it's about twelve to fifteen dollars for this bottle. Um, goes with grilled steak, chops, mushrooms, olives. And the lighter versions, um, chicken, white fish, and quiche. But I always say this about wine. <clears throat> Anything you drink soda slash soft drinks with, any wine would be better than that. So I made it simple for you. All right. Beautiful smell. Really, violets. Oh, a lot of floral coming out of there now. Yeah, it's beautiful. Fruits, floral. Kind of a wood influence, just barely on the wood. And like I said, a wine cellar. I'm loving it. All right. Mm. Oh, yeah. Two things happening. Getting some acid uh, reaction to the acidity. Mouth watering. And a little bit of puckering to the um, tannins at the top of the mouth, the roof of the mouth, where it's dried out, um, kind of like a tea bag or a tea that's too strong. That feeling, not the taste. So you need three things to be balanced. You need the tannins, which I just described, the acidity, which I just described, and fruit. And I told you about the smell. Now, mm -hmm. it's got a lot of fruit to it. Nice dark fruits, raspberries, more blackberries, that type of plums. I think you're going to pick out your own fruits. Everybody's brain associates with things that they've had in the past. The point that I'm making that I think that everyone or almost everybody's going to agree with is they're going to get some type of fruit. doesn't matter what I'm getting every little fruit. The fact is you like fruit, you like getting some nice dark fruits, you're going to get them. The tannin and the acid in this one tell me this is a 2000, what did I say? Um, 18, five years old. It's still got a lot of life left. Yeah. So the tannins soften with time. Uh, this is five years old, very drinkable. But the fact that there's still, you know, the amount of acid and the, um, the amount of tannin still left in it gives that a shelf life to go still. Uh, this can use some aeration, do a rough pour. Pour it in a glass, uh, you know, 15 minutes before you uh, drink it. Use an aerator, a decanter, I should say. Pour it in a decanter. You pour it in a decanter roughly, it's going to bubble, it's going to air up, then it has a lot of surface. Instead of having this much air surface, it'll have the whole decanter air surface. If you have an aerator on top of that, you're really going to increase the aging process real quick and soften the tannins. So you're going to soften the tannins and bring out more of the fruit flavor. Of course, anything you eat with any kind of fat will coat your tongue and pretty much hide those tannins as well. So, yes, a lot of beautiful fruits to it. And I'm getting some tobacco. You might say, I'm not getting tobacco. I'm getting earthiness. I'm getting leaves. I'm getting leather. I, I put those all in the same category as well. They'll be in the same ballpark there. So if any of those things sound good to you. And with the smell... And the floral, and I'm getting in, and it's like a um, an aromatic, a, a uh, flavorful smelling tobacco, and that smells good. And yeah, with the fruit, Oof. yeah, that's what I'm gonna leave it there. You might pick up more things. 
And with time, the things will develop more, depending on the year, depending on how you aerate it, decan it. But you'll be in the same ballpark. If you've, you've had Cabernet Franc, but uh, Cabernet Franc, you probably don't know it. You've had it in blends. Remember, American wine, for example, only has to be 75% of the varietal listed. So a Cabernet Sauvignon has to be 75% Cabernet. It's rarely 100, although it can be. It just can't be 74. So if you've had a Cabernet Sauvignon, you've probably had this added into it. If you've had a um, Bordeaux, this is probably being, could be in a lot of red blends here in the uh, United States forever. So you've probably had this grape, and I don't know if you've ever had it 100%. If you haven't, it's something fun to do. It's something fun to develop your palate. Kind of pick this out of blends, maybe, if you, if you, if you get good at it. And just seeing if you enjoy this one. Seeing, hey, there's a new favorite. I got something different I want to do in this well. Not as strong and as kicky in your butt as, let's say, a Cabernet or Sangiovese uh, Chiani type, right? A little softer, more like a Merlot. So if you haven't had it, definitely check it out. It's definitely worth it. All right, everybody. Thank you for being here. Don't forget to sub. Very important. I'll see you on the next one.